awesome. Trump is going to court again tomorrow. And this is about the fake elector scheme and his, and his attempt to overturn the election. We are less than 24 hours away from an historic arraignment for the former president, now charged with his second set of federal crimes. He'll face a judge tomorrow as part of the special counsel's investigation into a plot to illegally overturn the 2020 election to try to keep Mr. Trump in power. Man, for the guy that's all about law and order, he sure has broken a lot of laws. A key part of it all, the so-called fake elector scheme. You may have been hearing about it, right? People talking about it, throwing off the phrase fake electors, etc. But in tonight's breakdown, we're explaining what a fake elector is and how this unfolded. You probably know how a presidential election works. Voters in all 50 states head to the polls to choose who they want as president. If enough voters back a certain candidate, that candidate gets electoral college votes from that state. The winner needs 270. That's the magic number. Here's the road to 270. So that's what you see on TV. You typically don't see what happens next because it's usually a formality as members of the electoral college pick it up from there. Those members, called electors, are selected by state parties months before election day after every presidential election in december each state gathers together electors from whichever party won the popular vote in that state those folks meet and send an official certificate to the national archives and to congress they look like these and they basically say okay this is who gets our state's electoral college votes it's pretty ceremonial except in 2020 that's when the former president and his allies got to work convincing loyalists in seven states that they should back Republican electors in key battlegrounds won by the Democrat in the race, Joe Biden. The focus on Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, Wisconsin, New Mexico and Pennsylvania. Some of those so-called fake electors showed up at state capitals where the real electors were meeting. They even created phony certificates like the ones you see here. The goal, apparently, to send through this fake slate of electors to Congress, where the vice president presides over the official count. The thinking seemed to be that then-VP Mike Pence could grant Mr. Trump the disputed electoral votes or send the issue back to the states. Which he didn't have that authority in the moment that... Uh... Trump and friends weren't able to use the fake electors to change the election. That's when they got violent and stormed the Capitol, chanting, hang Mike Pence. Opening the door to keeping Mr. Trump in power. You probably know what happened next. Pence rejected the scheme, citing the Constitution. President Donald J. Trump! And Mr. Trump on the National Mall told his supporters the election was being stolen. It was not. We fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. You fight like hell. If you don't fight, you're not going to have a country. Those are some words to help spur on your angry base um, about your claims that you were supposed to be president and the election was stolen. And this is one of the reasons why they started getting violent. Uh, Trump wanted to act like he was not a part of it, but he was. Remember, by that time, most of Mr. Trump's election challenges had been thrown out in court and his own attorney general had declared no evidence of widespread fraud. Some defenders of the former president have pointed to one historical example, they say, the 1960 presidential election. That's when the votes in the state of Hawaii were so close between John F. Kennedy and Richard Nixon, even a month after Election Day, that both slates of electors, the Democrats and Republicans, offered up their votes at the post-election day meeting. The big difference, as experts point out, the results in Hawaii were actually in question, something that was not the case in 2020. 